still make phone calls and still have the internet after 2012. How are we going to do this, lads? This is our Britain. This is our covenant for how we take care of the world, not like this lot. Time to figure out how we're going to join together to have a voice and all talk to each other louder than the mass media system. Speak to you soon. Bye. However, it found that his rights were breached because of the degrading conditions in which he was held. It's ordered Moscow to pay more than £20,000 in damages and costs. BBC News. You can find out just how many species of plants and animals live in an average garden in an hour's time on Radio 4. First, it's time for Woman's Hour with Jane Garvey. A very good morning to you. Welcome to the programme. And today we've got the American economist who says we'd all have more children if we stopped taking parenthood so seriously. Also today, the principal ballerina with the Royal Ballet, Tamara Rocco, on performing Romeo and Juliet in front of up to 12,000 people at the O2 Arena. And a return visit from Daniela Genus, one of our women in business and an events manager. She invites her mentor to an evening of Caribbean culture and we were there as well. More details later in the programme. Frederick Le Bouillet is the grandfather of natural childbirth. He's 92 and worked for many years as an obstetrician before a change of heart about the whole nature of birth. There's no doubt his controversial views have had quite an impact. His book, Birth Without Violence, first appeared in 1975 and it was a lyrical reaction to what many felt was becoming an over-medicalised approach to childbirth. Disturbed by the cries of newborns, he advocated a mother's touch and the immersion of the newborn in warm water shortly after birth, something taken on by Michel Odon in his development of water births. Well, to mark a new translation of Birth Without Violence by Yvonne Fitzgerald, Frederick Le Bouillet came to Britain, and when I met him, he described his early years as an obstetrician. I delivered, oh, so this is the way I used to talk, more than 10,000 children. And at one point, I started asking myself the question, when a child is born, it should start breathing gently, and the screaming is unbearable. It's expressing such uh, an agony, such a despair, and I could not understand this paradox that a child should be so happy being free from his prison and enjoying freedom, and on the contrary, it was desperate. But the peace and the quiet of the womb, that must be a very difficult place to leave, surely. So isn't, what a, do you mean? Well, isn't a newborn baby bound to scream and express? Yes. And it's desperate. And the question was, why? And I started asking myself, how can I communicate with this newborn who's not talking but expressing and make 
him understand that it's fine to be here. So what did you decide to do? It was not a decision. Because decision is mental. But it was communicating with the child without words. Simply by touch. And by understanding what was his condition. When the child is born, he's entering the kingdom of press and breathing. So he must simply be given time. What about warm water? Warm water is very simple. What is so frightening for the child is that the moment he's born, everything is new and unknown. So, feeling warm water is like meeting a friend in a foreign city where you know nobody. So the child is feeling, ah, oh, something I know. Something I know. And his anguish begins to cool down. You say you delivered babies in what we might call the old-fashioned way. Well, I will tell you what. I've been steely woman. I used to give them anesthesia. Just like Queen Victoria, chloroform. And the moment the woman is given anesthesia, she's missing the best of it. It's a territory which is very special, very private. And we are going to use the word Freud invented, libido. And of course you understand what libido means. I guess that I'm not quite sure whether I'd associate it with childbirth. This is a combination of libido. And it is fantastic. And it is something which is very hard to understand. And childbirth is like a progression towards you see, one has to be so careful with words. What you do, I mean, you are basically saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that natural childbirth is the ultimate sexual experience. Yeah, uh, you are. And it's not natural, of course. It's a mystery. I don't know who said that. Regarding the great mysteries of life, nothing can be said with words. It has to be guessed or understood intuitively by wise men or poets. But it's as simple as this. This is a combination of his life and it's a progression towards an order. Same progression. Stop. Stop. So, so what is the role of the doctor? No one, no, no, no much of us. Alone we are born, alone we live, alone we die. The doctor is there only for pathology. But health goes with us. The moment the doctor comes, you're sick. Well, there obviously over the last number of decades has been a change to medicalize childbirth, has it? Yes, that is true. And is any of that right? Completely wrong. Totally wrong. Can I sleep for you? No. Can I eat for you? No. Can I give birth? Can anyone give birth for you? No one but you. Well, of course, that's not quite true. I, mean, I, I, I will talk about myself in, in this instance. And I had two elective caesareans because both my babies were breech babies. Just a complete mistake. Is it? Okay. Breach is normal. So what should have happened? But what is wrong with breach? It is a normal physiological posture of the child during the last months of pregnancy. But if a woman is too tense, and forgive me if saying so, if she's too much afraid, then the child cannot So the actual thing that ought to be done would be to make the woman free from her fears. If she would face her fear, if instead of running away she would say, yes, I'm afraid. Yes, if you would look your fear, in the eyes, it would vanish. But, but, but we know that hundreds of thousands of women all over the world, some in very poor countries, die in childbirth. No, that's not true. Why is that a lie? That's a lie. That's a lie. Forgive me for saying so. What you're saying now is a sort of excuse for what you've been doing, but there is no guilt. 
which has been very short-night, accept it, accept it. But you see, fear is such a great part in our lives. Yes. Well, I see. Uh, I have to. I have to ask this question then, or make this point. Excuse me, Frederick. Right. I mean, you are a man. There will be millions of women who've been through childbirth. Some naturally, some having cesareans, some right. having emergency cesareans, and they will all say to you, all "You're a man." Right. So actually, although it's great that you're interested and that you're so passionate in this, about the subject, you are a man, and you will not have to give birth, and you haven't had to give birth. All I'm telling, I learned it from women. <laughs> and one thing should be very clear, childbirth is a secret garden of women. Men can never know anything about it. Can I just ask, is, is there, in your opinion, ever a place for medical intervention in childbirth? Only when it goes on. But first, you've got to try. At a certain point of labor, Woman is experiencing death, and because she's been able to face death, she becomes free from the fear of death. Is there anything about modern childbirth? Do you think that is not is right? Is modern? Well, okay. is, there, is there anything positive about our current experience? Well, no, it's nothing positive. It's all completely. If you've decided you're not going to take any risk, then you're really in danger. And childbirth is complete risk. And you're put on your metal. Either you take the challenge or you take it off. When you uh, attended births and watched so many women, so many thousands of women in labor, were you jealous of their experience, would you say? No, no, no. I was convinced it was so painful, and it could not but be painful. I used to give them chloroform anesthesia. The moment there is anesthesia, she's missing everything. What? And second, it's so important, there cannot be any bonding between the mother and the child. Because? Because anesthesia separates the mother from the baby. And wait a minute, no woman is giving birth to a child. It's a child who wants to be born. The active actor is a child, not a woman. So it's a sort of adventure which is experienced in collaboration between the child and the mother. And this is why the father should not be there. Should not be there. We need to have six women. Because? Her attention has to be done completely inside. And she is only, as it were, talking without words or with child. Am I helping you well? But it's a child who is the, the conductor of the experience. So a woman should be alone. But, but what about the role of a midwife? Preparing her coffee in the kitchen and saying, in case you need me, you call me. The opinion of Frederick Le Bouillet. Any thoughts on that? And please do contact the program via the website, of course. Uh, well, that's birth then. Uh, what happens in the next 20 years or so? What approach should we adopt to bringing our children up? Lots of intellectual stimulation and oodles of parental involvement in the form maybe of Mandarin lessons and a 24 hour, seven days a week taxi service on tap? Or should you just kick back? Crack open a takeaway pizza and loll in front of the box and just let them go with it. Well, the American author and economist Brian Kaplan says we're all making a bit too much of a meal as parents in these days. And if we could just relax, we'd have bigger families and be a lot happier. I talked to Brian, whose book is called Selfish Reasons to Have More Kids, and to the career arts journalist Lydia Slater. Woman, you're Tell us Brian head. why he thinks. Don't want to fuck back at the top, don't want to know Where I've come from, why I go What do I do? It's always thoughts from higher, but 